Hello everybody, it's Raku here, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be discussing why Rotom is one of the best Pokemon in the game currently. And I'm talking about the fact that not one, not two, but three of the six, I think, Rotom forms are in the overused tier currently. That's more than every other generation, except Generation 4, before the Rotoms had individual typings. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining why and listing the Pokemon that Rotoms are strong against, weak against, and explaining each one of them, which will hopefully give you a better understanding of why Rotom has such a good place in the metagame currently. So, we're going to start by looking at the stats of these three Rotom forms. We're going to start by looking at their stats, of course. They all have the same ability, which is Levitate, which nullifies their ground weakness for two of them and ground neutrality for one of them and makes it an immunity, which is always good. It's always nice to have immunities. Their stats look very bulky. It can be offensive with that great special attack, and it's sort of average when it comes to speed for this generation. But their typings and their three strong moves, I guess you could say, are what puts them above the other Rotom forms and above a lot of the other Pokemon in the game. So Rotom Heat is a fire type that gets the move Overheat, which is basically a very powerful move. And it allows you to hit a lot of Pokemon in the tier, which I will be showing in a few minutes. It also has the move Volt Switch, which they all have, but it allows it to basically pivot between all other Pokemon on the team. And pivoting is really good. It's really useful in the metagame. And you can't go wrong with Volt Switch. Rotom Mo has the grass type version of Overheat, which is Leaf Storm. It's another very powerful move. Both of those moves have the drawback of having your special attack every time they are used. So it's sort of like a you hit something and you then you run, basically, because your damage is gone. Rotom Wash, however, doesn't have that drawback. It has the move Hydro Pump, which, while not being very accurate, like it's not one of the most accurate moves in the game, however, it's still decently accurate, and it's also less powerful. However, Hydro Pump is still a very spammable move because you don't have any drawbacks to using it. Overall, these Pokemon have, like, very... They're bulky, but they're also strong, and they're not super slow, so they're kind of like average kind of the Pokemon, but let's take a look at what puts them above all the other Pokemon that are similar in stats to them. So, Rotom Heat, I look through every Pokemon in the tier, and Rotom Heat has seven different Pokemon that I felt it can easily counter. Togekiss? because of the electric moves and the fact that Togekiss's dual stabs in Fairy and Flying are resisted. Aegislash, because of Overheat being able to destroy it, and the fact that Aegislash can't hit it for super effective and Rotom Heat does resist its most spammable stab being Steel. B-Sharp, again, because it's a Steel type and it can't really just hit Rotom that hard. Like, it can't. Corviknight, because both of its stabs are resisted and both of Rotom's stabs hit it for super effective, which allow it to break through Corviknight, which most Pokemon can't do. I had it. I made a guide on Corviknight. It went up yesterday. Go check that out. It was probably the video I'm most proud of ever. We have Ferrothorn. Again, Ferrothorn's a very bulky Pokemon and doesn't have many weaknesses, but one of those happens to be Fire. And that is a times four weakness, which means that Overheat, there's no chance, no matter how bulky this thing is, no chance of surviving. And Mandibuzz, just because 
Mandibuzz to a lesser extent, but the electric type moves allow you to at least scare it off. Oops, sorry about that. And finally, Rotom Mo. This is all of the Rotom forms form a fire, water, grass core, which basically allows them to. Like, Rotom Mo beats Rotom Wash, Rotom Wash beats Rotom Heat, and Rotom Heat beats Rotom Mo. It's kind of like a rock, paper, scissors thing. But Rotom Mo just gets decimated by overheat. Now we're going to look at the strengths of Rotom Mo. So, again, Corviknight. Corviknight can't really deal with the fact that the electric moves and the fact that you're just plain old, like, just flat out faster, so Volt Switch will be doing tons of damage and you can just get around, especially if you're running a spec set for Rotom Mo, which I don't think is that common, but Corviknight would really hate that. Crawdunt, because its main stab in water is resisted and both of your stabs hit it for super effective, and it can't really hurt you much unless it carries Ice Fang. Gyarados, because it's times four weak to electric, and it doesn't really have a reliable way of hitting you, seeing as its flying stab only comes in the form of hurricane and bounce, one being a special move, and Gyarados doesn't really have a good special attack, and the other being a two-turn move, which you could easily get away from. Next Pokemon is Mandibuzz. Again, Mandibuzz just can't deal with the fact that you're going to hit it with strong electric type moves. Seismitoad is one of the best Pokemon in the tier right now, and I feel like Rotom Mo only came up because of Seismitoad, and the fact that you can easily take out Seismitoad with a Leaf Storm, just destroy it with that times 4 effective hit. The only thing that Seismitoad is weak to is Grass, and the only Grass Pokemon are Ferrothorn, which doesn't usually carry the stab, and Rotom Mo. Like, the only grass Pokemon on the tier. And Toxapex, just because they can easily deal with it. Like, you can easily deal with Toxapex with electric-type moves, and Toxapex can't really harm you back. Although Toxapex is a poison-type and has super effective stab against Rotomo, Toxapex is very weak and never carries stab moves unless it's Scald. Also, we have Togekiss. Togekiss is, again, just weak to electric. So is Pelipper. I already explained that the Fire, Water, Grass Core, Rotom, Mo Rotom Wash gets beaten by Rotom Mo. And Doug Trio, sorry if it's cut off, but Doug Trio is just weak to it and can't really harm it back because of Levitate and the fact that it can escape Arena Trap and can't be harmed by Earthquake. Now let's take a look at the probably the best form of Rotom, Rotom Wash, with the most strengths. It has 12 different strengths in the tier. First being Cinderace, it resists its spammable stab being fire, and it gets easily destroyed by a hydro pump. Cloister, because you resist Cloister's dual stabs and can easily take it out with an electric type move, or even severely damage it with a water type move because of its horrible special defense. Corviknight is a very, very bulky Pokemon, but again, just easily gets taken out by your um, electric moves. Same with Crawdunt, same reasoning as with Rotom Mo. Gyarados, again, just... You resist both of its stab this time, and it has absolutely no way of hitting you unless it carries Power Whip. And then Mandibuzz, which is easily taken out by an Electric-type move. So, all the Rotoms have many strengths against the common Pokémon in the tier. However, they have some weaknesses and counters, which I'm going to list off here. Although this list is considerably lower in size. So, let's take a look at Rotom Moe's weaknesses. We have Gengar and Toxtricity, just because they're extremely powerful poison types that can deal a lot of damage. I already explained Rotom Heat. And Cinderace, same reasoning. Cinderace is a fire type, and it beats Rotom, be Heat, um, Rotom Moe being a grass type. 
Also, cloister is an interesting one because it would counter Rota Mo, but Rota Mo's dual stabs hit it for super effective, which could cause many, many problems for cloister. However, so it's a tricky one. Don't necessarily use it as a counter. However, cloister does have super effective priority and shell smash to gain the speed edge. So cloister couldn't be used as an effective counter, but if you set up or have priority, then it's an effective check. Now let's get into the big one, Rotom Heat and its long list of counters and checks. Let's start with the big one, Excadrill. Excadrill has to worry about super effective moves, but its Mold Breaker allows it to, allows it to hit Pokemon that are flying or levitating with ground type moves which would absolutely destroy it since it's five, not five, it's four times weak to Earthquake. Tyranitar just flat out resists hit stabs, Sandstream boosts its special defense, and it hits it for super effective. Cloister again, and so, and Cloister and Crawdon again, difficult. Oh, and Gyarados down here, I'm not sure if you can see it, I don't think you guys can see it, but Cloister and Crawdon and Gyarados are interesting because they're weak to electric, in Gyarados's case severely, but they all hit Rotom for super effective. I already explained Cloyster. Crawdon happens to have super effective priority and the ability adaptability, so Rotom Heat would get destroyed. And Gyarados, well, it's Gyarados, it's a water type, and it sets up Dragon Dance, it beats Rotom. Dracovish is a water type that isn't weak to electric, so Dracovish is a very effective counter to Rotom Heat, seeing as it can hit it with a Ficious Ren on a Scarf set, or even on a Banded set, because it would kill even if it wasn't the double power. Also, Pelipper isn't an effective counter as a water type, because it's also times 4 weak to electric, however, it can still work as a counter, but... It might not be the best counter, I guess. And you could run Scarf Pelipper, I guess. On top of this, it sets up Rain, which weakens Rotom Heat's Fire-type moves for the rest of the team. So, that's a plus. Rotom Wash, I already explained, and Seismitoad resists and is immune to both of the stabs and hits it for super effective with water moves. And... Because of Levitate, obviously, Ground can't hit it. And finally, Rotom Wash has many, many weaknesses, totally. Yeah, this is a massive amount of three weaknesses. Excadrill with Mold Breaker. I don't think you can see the Mold Breaker, but Excadrill with Mold Breaker is an effective counter to Rotom Wash because, well, it has to worry about super effective attacks. It can easily take it out. And... It's just too easy to beat Rotom with a Scarf or Banded Excadrill because Excadrill does in fact outspeed Rotom Wash and all the other Rotoms except for regular Rotom, but we're not talking about that Rotom. Rotom Mo and Ferrothorn just because they're the only grass types in the tier and that's the only weakness other than Mold Breaker ground type move that it has, so yeah. Rotom Wash is by far the best, has the best standing in the tier and always has last generation, the generation before it, it was OU, and even the generation before that, I believe. It's the only Rotom that's consistently been an OU every generation. Rotom Heat has been in UU a lot of the time, but it's now back in OU where it belongs. And Rotom Mo has been down in RU a lot of the time, even. But now, again, it's up in OU, and yeah. This generation, Rotom has been very good in the tier. In fact, I don't think Rotom would do well in any other generation if you... Like, Rotom would be considered bad in other generations if it was... If it was considered decent this generation, if it was considered amazing this generation, it would be considered normally what it would be good. Okay, I'm making no sense, am I? Well, if you made it this far into the video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and comment 
Well, you can't comment because comments are disabled. However, you can click the first link in the description that will bring you to a Discord page that allows you to comment on all my videos. And I really hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye!